good morning. It is 5.41 a.m. We are walking to our last big meal before we get on the trail. We always try to eat Britain, so we're on the way there. Gonna load up on some food and then head out. Last meal. All right, this is the first lake we're gonna be on. Try to get an early start because of the wind. Got all loaded up. We got a few miles paddled till the first portage. All right, so we canoed about three miles from here and then we came here. So you just step in the water, get all of your stuff, and then we're gonna walk it. So portage, as I'm going up here, I might get kind of winded because it's my first one. Um, a portage is basically these old trails that the Indians used before to get between the lakes. And we still use them today. Um, 320 rods makes up one mile. A rod is the length of a canoe. Bucks. Um, and so this portage is 80 rods. So really it's, it's not that far, but I can feel far when you have a pack on. Mom and I's packs are each, we're guessing around 60 pounds each. And then the boys have the canoes, which are 40 pounds each, but the canoes, you know, are harder to balance. But it's like this, see? It's just like a little hiking trail. Um, the worst part about portages are the bugs, for sure, because there's not really wind and there's a lot of mud, but you make it work. You get used to it, so, yep, first one down of many over the next five days. Not sure if you can see the bugs swarming me, but I've been singing a bear song. <laughs> Maybe I should sing the moose, because I'm out here alone. They're all behind me. So, oh, first obstacle, ow, bug biting me. By the mud is always so buggy. <clears throat> um. But I don't want to sneak up on animals, so I just like to sing and talk really loud. So some more education about the Boundary Waters while I'm waiting. Some of the lakes are really big, like the one we were just on that allows motorboats, but the rest of the ones we're gonna be on don't allow boats. So like this one, it's almost more like a, ooh, almost more like a pond, see? And so we're just gonna go over there and there's another short portage to another lake. Um, but yeah, this one wasn't bad. I just sang a bug song and they'll be coming down the trail soon. Pack up, go on to the next one. Keep doing it all over. First portage. Yeah. Woo! You just... Yeah. Uh -huh. It's fighting you. Too fast. Off he goes. I couldn't vlog on this portage for the first half it because of straight uphill. This is, should be our longest portage of the trip and the one with most elevation. So, and our packs will only be getting lighter and our legs stronger. So hopefully it'll be better, but it's really, it's really cool. It's just very steep. While on this long portage specifically, I found the best strategy is to carry both paddles in one hand, have one hand free to smack the mosquitoes because the bugs on portages are insane because there's no wind. So I need to put this up so I can smack some. The best feeling in the world on the portage is when you see like right there where the trees stop and you know the water's near. How do you feel after that long portage? Never felt better. Mm-hmm. We just did that. Nice. This is what Minnesota's like. Killing bugs there, another one there, one on my arm. They even bite through your clothes. Here's what the water's like. You can see it's pretty deep, but it's just so clear because no boats are allowed. No one. A lunch taken is good old summer sausage and crackers. We have half of one of these a day for us. Portage number four, possibly the last one, maybe not. How are you doing? Great. Nice little view on the portage. The mantra I tell myself when we skip portages like this. No, every step, <laughs> step closer to swimming and laying down. The last little canoe was across Vera Lake, I believe. It wasn't too far, but man, today has been quite a doozy of a day with portages. You know, like I said at the beginning, one mile is 320 rods. Pretty much every portage we've done has been around 200 rods and uphill. So 
Tomorrow should be much easier. But it's the last one. We're going to Knife Lake. It's supposed to be really pretty. Spend the night. The moose, the moose. Swimming in the water. The moose, the moose. Eating his supper. What in the world? I don't know what that is, but it scared me when I was just singing my songs. Quick back change. Also, just thundered, and Dad said that was a grouse, not a chicken, which we hear the grouse at night beating their wings. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm delusional. But, yeah, that's what it was. It started chasing me. That was a little bit scary. Also, I'm getting my second wind. I'm delusional. I'm in a really good mood because I've been singing and running. So, hopefully I don't see more animals, though. They're not just right there that we can't see. And then two in a little bay over here. And then we've got a couple on this island. Actually, that's the island I think that Dorothy Wolf or whatever. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, so, what I would say is we need to get one around in here, since it's raining, and set up our stuff. In a quick what turn of events. Oh, we have that in there. It's raining. Well, we are co scoping out a campsite, but maybe not anymore. We'll figure it out. Just paddling. This island is the Root Beer Lady Island. What's the Root Beer Lady? She made root beer. She lived the last person to live in the Boundary Waters, and she made root beer for the people who came by canoe by. How neat. Well, we found a nice Boy Scout troop to hunker down with in the storm until it passes and we can find another she site. She to weigh it down. <laughs> All their stuff. <laughs> and then us over here. Here we are. Just waiting it up. Well, we are saved by the Goodwill of the Boy Scouts. It stops raining now. Um, we're gonna get to another site. We made it to our campsite and Cobra's going fishing. We're kind of getting things set up, but um, Everything is soaking wet, so we're hoping to be able to try some things off. You can see morning. Ooh, nice and wrinkly. But we're gonna hopefully get a fire if we can and get going. Second cast. <laughs> All right, map time with Lada. We started right there at the snowbank access point. We paddled along this way, and we had a nice tailwind, so it was good. Picked up, uh, portaged a 50 rod and then a 30 rod in the boot, and we enjoyed boot, came along this way. Um, and while we were in boot, we had a little snack to get us ready for this long portage. 220, we were told it was the, the toughest porridge on our trip, so we took it, and it was a pretty strong uphill, but we we managed, we made it, made it to Lake Ensign, and then we came to that campsite right there and ate lunch, and that was a, a nice campsite, actually, a pretty good one. Um, we had, uh, we, we met some uh, people from Minnesota who were using the campsite after us. We told them we were just for lunch, and then we came down Ensign Lake and made a turn to this 180 rod portage in Devira. That was a, a, another uphill, but we made it, came up, stopped, took some pictures back of the lake. It was pretty, got to Vera. When we, Vera, the water was so clear, but we had a huge tailwind. So we stopped and we pumped water and drink, drink water there and the, the wind pushes down. Came down to this 200 rod portage, which was also tough. It had lots of ups and downs, but we, we made through the 200 rod portage. And about the time we got down to there, it started raining. Um, so we put on our raincoats and we decided to come up to see the um, Isle of Pines, the Dorothy Moulter Island, and about right there it started raining really hard. <laughs> so then we saw the island and we paddled around and about right there it started thundering. And then we came around to this campsite to see if it was open and about right there it started lightning and we could see <laughs> the lightning. So this campsite was taken, so we paddled like crazy this one. That one was taken but we just kind of passed it and then we went to this campsite where we saw Boy Scouts and they beckoned us in and let us spend some time with them under the tarp until it stopped um, stopped thundering in the distance. And then we took off this way and we made it to that little dot wrong. It's actually right on that point. And we are right there 
at this campsite and it is a nice campsite. Lots of room and lots of tent spaces and we're enjoying it. Good job. I didn't really film dinner because we were exhausted. We got back here, we set up camp and we ate dinner. So we dehydrated all of our food. We rehydrated refried beans and tortillas. And what else did we eat? Some cookies, something else. Um, but pretty much we've just all been sitting and Cooper's been fishing some. We've just been sitting and not really doing anything because we're so tired. So it's 7.45, we're starting to pack up camp because at dusk all of the mosquitoes come out. So we're gonna try to get in our tent before dusk and be asleep because we are so tired. Good morning. It is 6.16. Um, I'm the last one up. <laughs> Welcome. No one was here. Um, pretty chilly outside, but the high's going to get up to the 80s again. Nothing like tomorrow where the low's going to be in the 40s, but we're going to get going. We're not cooking breakfast. Dad just made some stuff in the dehydrator and we have bagels. Then we're getting going. Today we have more portages, but they're way shorter. So... Should be a good day. It's supposed to rain tonight, so we're going to try to get to camp early. I just stepped out of the tent, and everything hurts. My abs hurt. My booty hurts. My forearms hurt. My shoulders hurt. Oh, no. It's going to be a doozy of a day. How are you good feeling morning. this morning? I'm good now. It took me a while to be able to get up, uh, sit up, a little stiff on the back, but I'm good. good. How are you feeling? Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have bagel for breakfast, and I'm doing just fine. Thank you. Doing great. Glad it's the 4th of July. USA, baby. The worst is putting on the cold, wet socks from yesterday. But there's no point of putting on dry ones because we're just going to get them wet again in a few miles when we ported, so... Yeah. And the still wet clothes from yesterday. Same thing. We are about to sail off. The next day I was just doing a quick last run through the campsite. This is my fit for the day. I have 27 bug bites just on the back right, or just on the back of my right thigh. So, getting all in my bug fit today. And so smooth this morning. It just looks like glass. Also, this is Canada. This is America. So obviously we're paddling over there because it's the 4th of July. We're here at Thunder Point. So it's a hike you can do. We're going to hike up that. And it goes to a point to overlook the lake. We've never really done a hike like this before, but we can put all of our canoes down and go up. So we fun. Made it up to the point. So over there is Canada. This is America. Snack time. <laughs> I haven't filmed on any of the portages today. Oh, you can hear Dad singing. Because <laughs> um, they've all been really short. I think this is like our fifth portage of the day. Fourth? This one's longer. This one's 80. The rest have been like 30 or 25 rods. But this one's kind of steep. Doesn't really look steep. We're making it. I really only have a few more for the day. So, doing pretty good. We found a great spot for lunch. It's very steep to get up here, but this rock overlooks everything. And look at the view. Now that it's not raining, I'm going to give you more of a tour around what the campsites kind of look like. So tonight we'll put up our bear bags. I'll show you that. But there are things called latrines. Now yesterday, I've just been going in the woods, but campsites have latrines, which I'm on the trail right now to it. It's literally a hole in the ground, and that's where you go to the bathroom. Where is it? Where is it? Sometimes it's kind of a hunt. Oh, here it is. So you hike back in the woods, and this is what you see. Literally just hole in the ground by the Forest Service, and that's where the magic happens. It's usually super buggy, like right now. I don't know if you can see or hear them. So that's why sometimes I just choose the woods. But that's at every campsite. And yeah, 
Now we got lucky with this site. So our tent is right by the water, but all the sites also have a grate. That's how you know. And then we always set up a tarp okay. as well. So this is a really good site. We've seen some fish jumping, so we're gonna try to fish later. We have two filtration systems. One of them's the gravity filter. So mom's gonna show us how to use the gravity filter. First, you fill it up with water. Give me a minute. <laughs> So then you just flush the line and then now this filtered water lot. coming through and you just prop your bottle kind of There you go. Gravity filter. This is our other water filtration system. Cooper, what are you doing? Pumping the water. We do this in the middle of the lake sometimes. Making some real spaghetti sauce. We went through a variety of lakes today. We started off um, with Knife Lake, which was really big and really clear. Then we climbed up to Thunder Point where we could look down and see um, Canada on one side and the United States on the other, which was an excellent thing to do on Independence Day to celebrate the birth of our nation <laughs> is to climb up on a rock and look at it. And we ate lunch at this really cool place um, where it had cliffs up in the campsite and up at the top of the campsite it had a great view, even a great view from the latrine. <laughs> Today we had some funny things happen, but we also had some good things. Anna and I portaged the canoe for the first time today on our trip. Doing a different route on this portage. Got the canoe, walking down. And then Anna tried to be a nurse and operate on my eye. <laughs> and I think I might have corneal abrasion from it. <laughs> so, so we started the day with going into Canada and mom and I raced into Canada and we won and it feels good to win. And so I'm glad, you know, always good to start your day with a good win. You know, big or small, a win is a win. All right, map time with Lada. We started this side, moved around this way, and we we know it would be illegal to go to Canada, so we didn't do that, definitely. So then we came up here to this trail, hiked up the trail to Thunder Point, where we could see all the way back down here at Knife, which was really pretty. Uh, knife was so clear. Then we came down Knife, the South Arm of Knife, took this little portage over into Bonnie Lake, and then another short little portage into Spoon went around some islands, took this lake and this portage into Pickle Lake, and these lakes were really pretty kind of lakes. Then a bigger portage into Kekakavik, which we came all the way down to Kekakavik, which we're glad it was just recently opened. It was closed for a wildfire up to just a couple weeks ago, so we we're happy that it was open. Um, took our portage here into Strup Lake, and Strup Lake was really pretty. It was kind of low lying with lots of reeds and things in it, so pretty lake. Um, little portage into Wasini Lake, where we stopped at the Narrows for lunch, and it was tempting to stay there because the site was so cool. It was up on a cliff with a really neat um, view of the lake, but we decided to press on. Um, come down into the lake with a name I really can't pronounce, and the Jaron Lake, and then into Frazier, hung a right on Frazier, and got to that site right there, and we got everything all set up and ready to go about the time the rain came. Um, so we, we stayed dry, our stuff got wet, but we all stayed pretty dry and enjoyed the, the campsite right there on Fraser. Good morning from the third day. It was so hard to get up this morning. Um, just in so much pain, my back, my forearms, my booty, my sides, my shoulders. I mean, I think we're all feeling the same way. This is the source we've all ever been, but pushing through um we talked for like an hour about our route for the day so we got that figured out and we'll get going this morning our breakfast is dehydrated granola bars um everything is dehydrated including this but this one we don't have to rehydrate to eat very nice on this one, we don't have to portage between the lakes. We can just paddle through it. So we're leaving Fraser and heading to Thomas. Snack break.
We made it to lunch. We just paddled directly against wind for a long time. <clears throat> and tired. I'm excited to get some food to help my mood. Just setting our stuff down at the portage because we portage around this, but look how beautiful it is. Now we're gonna go down this river, which might be doing a lot of like picking up the canoe and going, but beautiful, beautiful. Just walking the canoe through the water. Up and over. What did you do on the 4th of July? Oh, I just forded a river with two canoes. While we're waiting on them to load up, we made it to our next lake. <laughs> we made it. This is such a difference from the against wind on a huge lake that we were in earlier. The river was an ice break, but straight back into this head on wind to the campsite. All right, we made it to our campsite for day three and the view is wonderful. It's got a nice big rock down here be great. So we found a nice and windy campsite which is what we wanted because it has rained every single day. Today it was just a little bit of rain um, but the last two days it rained a lot so it's nice to find this windy campsite. We're gonna dry everything out. Um, the Garmin says there is a zero percent chance of rain so hopefully that is true. Um, but yeah also windy campsites there's less bugs. The mosquitoes and the flies are just terrible, but with the wind, the flies don't really like the wind, so it's nice to just narrow it down to mosquitoes. Um, but I, as, oop, there's one. I, as well as everyone, are so sore um, from everything, just from carrying the canoe, the packs. So it's nice to be able to just lay in my Eno. We're gonna have an early night and rest up for our next last day tomorrow. Okay, I think everyone will agree that the worst part about Minnesota is the bugs. Uh, the bugs will bite through your sweatshirt. They don't bite through the raincoat, but like thick wool socks biting through it, biting through your pants, whatever. So we have all these different things. We have, you know, natural bug spray. I got some lotion that's working really well. The 100% DEET, just all that. The mosquitoes don't like the DEET, but the flies just don't care. They will go through your socks. They will go through anything. Um, but the mosquitoes here are different than Alabama mosquitoes, which is interesting. The ones here, ow, just like that. The ones here feel like a needle is going into you when they bite you. But then afterwards the bites don't itch. So like I'm covered in red bites, but they don't itch. But at home, like you don't really know you're getting bit, but then they itch like crazy. So I think that's an interesting difference, but yeah, the bugs, I do not know how people did it before bugs were existed. And speaking of bugs, this is blood from mosquitoes. Mosquito cam. RIP. Bathroom tour. Nice little trail. Got the goods. Okay, not too buggy. Surrounded by trees. This one, I give it a seven out of 10. That experience was almost pleasant compared to the usual constant smacking of skeeters while you're going. So, not too bad. Rehydrated taco soup for dinner. This is our other bear bag. This is called the Ursac, and it's bear proof. So what you do is you've cinched up a certain way and then you just essentially tie it on the tree and the bear can't get through this and your food is safe. All right, we started day three at this campsite on Fraser. And we came over this way to the east because we like small lakes as well. So we came over, made this 65 rod portage, which was kind of steep, but then uh, leveled out into Sagas Lake. And Sagas Lake was really pretty lake. Um, and then we came around this way, the little 20 rodder, 
to Shepo Lake, another pretty lake. And then we came here to Fraser, and about that time the wind picked up. And the wind was a westerly wind, so it was blowing this way, right into us. Um, came all the way down Fraser, and really had to, to work pretty hard to get down Fraser and fight the wind. But we made it through here, right in the narrows between Fraser and Thomas. We took a little break there because there was no wind there, and it was really pretty. It was um, real near, uh, maybe only 10 or 12 feet across. Um, but it's pretty. So we took a break there. Most importantly, we ate some M&Ms. Um, then we decided to, to head on down south of Thomas. And the wind was really picking up down Thomas. And we knew, uh, or not south on Thomas, we were going to go west on Thomas. And the, the wind was really picking up. We knew it was going to be that way. Um, so we made this long haul across the, the headwind, hung out in that little um, spot between two islands. Uh, then make the, the next haul uh, up against the wind to that island and then stopped at this campsite, ate lunch, um, most importantly ate some more M&Ms, and then searched for the, the Portage to Thomas Pond. Took us a little while to find that, it's not marked very well on the map, but we found the, the short um, Portage to Thomas Pond, Portage there, then we came up the river and um, we took some portages that were not marked and we didn't take some portages too, um, because not all these portages on here actually exist, I think. But um, but we enjoyed the portages, and sometimes we decided to 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 wade our boats through um, through this this river. But it was really pretty. Lots of um, lots of lily pads and, and so on down the river. So I made that. They made this 50 rod portage into Ima. Now when we got to Ima, the wind was really kicking up again. Uh, so we came over. Uh, our goal was to get to this site, so we went to this site, but we could see it was taken. So we stopped, looked at this site, and this site wasn't too bad at all, but it wasn't in the wind, and we're pretty wet, so it wanted to dry out. Um, so we had seen this site, so we came back to this site, checked it out, and that's where we are tonight. It's really nice. We're sitting on a, um, a big rock. We get a wind all over us um, right here, so we're able to put up a clothesline and get everything dried out, sit in the sun for a little while. The, the wind's making it a little bit chilly, but we're glad we're here for tonight. Tomorrow, that way. So we paddled into the wind pretty much the whole time today. That was fun. Good character building experience that I think was good for all of us. Today, the thing I enjoyed the most was getting to go where there was a waterfall. We paddled in areas that were smaller and I really enjoyed that. And so the waterfall was very beautiful and it was a surprise none of us knew we were going to get to see. We went down a river. We knew we were going to go down a river, but we didn't know how cool it was going to be. So it was a nice little windy river with lily pads and um, a pleasant surprise and a change from paddling in the wind so much. Good morning. It's 5.20 a.m., so we got up at 5. We're trying to get an early start on today because the wind got bad yesterday and we might be going on a big lake this afternoon. So we're going to have to make the call like 30 minutes into paddling which way we're going to go. If we're going to go the way that's possibly windy or the way that's not. But we did get to enjoy the beautiful sunrise, so hopefully it'll all be worth it. We're trying to pack up camp real quick and get going. We just did a short little five rod portage over these rapids. Now we're heading into this gap because apparently there's some pictographs there. We found the pictographs. It's nothing like right there. Nothing like what we saw a few years ago, but still really neat on this big cliff. We are here at the famous The Fun Is Gone campsite, which is our first night ever six years ago. We spent the night here and it was pouring on rain. And right there, mom fell and said, the fun is gone. And we still quote it six years later. We are all reminiscing. Cooper, where were you? Where were you, Cooper? Up there, Dad. I was right up there on top of that rock. And I was way back there in the fetal position because I was freezing. And I was here trying to pump water and the fun was gone. We are reminiscing on how far we've come since the first trip. And the first trip, our longest porch was about 80 rods. And this trip, we the first day, we hit multiple that were over 200. So come a long way. We all agree the most valuable thing you can have up here is a good rink. It was a good thing we got up early because this is how calm Snowbank is and usually winds are crazy like yesterday so 
we really don't have too much farther, a few mile paddle to our next portage and then eventually find a campsite. Well, we finally made it to our campsite for the day. We ended up having to canoe all the way around Disappointment Lake until we found the last site here. It's not the greatest site, but it works. Spirits were definitely down, but now they're up while we got to eat Cobra's fishing. So should be a peaceful last afternoon here. All right, map time with Lada, day four. So we started on this campsite in Ima, where we were last night, and the wind was very calm this morning, very different than it was when we started or when we finished yesterday. So we came this way, came across Ima very quickly, um, back into the back. Did a little five rod pullover, didn't take as long. Came down the narrows of Jordan, which was really pretty, all these rocks, um, cliffs on each side. And we were looking for pictographs and we think we found them. They're really faint, we knew they're faint, but um, down here um, next to the end. So we spent some time on that. And we came into Jordan and visited our most memorable campsite at Jordan Lake from our very first um, camping trip uh, to the Boundary Waters ever. So we stopped there and we reminisced and took pictures and told stories. Came down Jordan Lake, uh, took this portage over to Caddy Man, came up to the north, 25 to Gibson, then 35 over to Swing, 50 to Abaddon, I uh, can't, still can't pronounce it, um, and then a tough portage to Haven, really steep uphill, and then downhill for 80 rods, um, and then another short little pullover till we were at Boot, and we started early in the morning, so we weren't even to lunchtime yet. Uh, these lakes were all pretty murky, but by the time we got the boot, it was crystal clear. It was really pretty. So I came down boot, stopped right there, had a snack, came over, hit our 30-rod portage, um, followed by 50, same ones we had at the beginning, in the snowbank. And we were concerned it was going to be really windy in snowbank, so we got here early. And it was kind of windy until we got out here, and then the w wind really cut down, and it was really nice. Um, so we hugged the east bank of snowbank, came all the way down here to the portage disappointment, 140 rods, uh, longish portage, but it was nice, uh, easy to walk. So we walked the 140 rods to Disappointment Lake. So now we were looking for a campsite. And our first goal was this campsite on the island, which was taken. And we talked to a couple, uh, to a group who had left this campsite, so it was really good. So we came around the peninsula of this campsite, it was taken. We looked over here, that campsite was already taken. Came to this campsite, taken. Came to this campsite, taken. So at this point, we realized why it was called Disappointment Lake. Um, so we came back across this because we saw this was open the first time. And here we have settled for the night. Now, since we've been here, we've seen multiple groups pass by this way and some going in, some going out. And um, they all look like they're a little disappointed too, looking for campsites because I think the lake's probably entirely full tonight. But um, we've had some luck catching smallmouth bass and we've enjoyed our time here. And then tomorrow we'll be heading out. Good morning. It's our last morning on trail. It's probably about 5.10. We woke up at 5. Um, it's already really windy out. And so we're probably going to go a route. Which we're very close to the car. But we're probably going to go to a route where we are. We spend less time on the really big lake snowbank. Because it just gets super windy. And it's already windy here on like a medium sized lake. Um, but we're going to pack up camp. Get going on a trip. Yesterday we just hung out, read, fished for a while. It was really nice to relax and go to sleep early. All these mosquitoes are trying to attack me, but they can't get me. All of our hair is so greasy, it just doesn't move and it looks wet. I, we are all very excited to take our $5 shower at the Outfitter today. Heading out at 6 a.m. for our last day. We just finished our last portage. It was 100 and something rods. The mosquitoes were horrible. Like, 
I had, I mean, no exaggeration, at least 50 following me. There's dad. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. Mom swallowed a few, <laughs> but we're on our way. We have a few mile paddle. There they are. A few mile paddle and we'll be back to the car. We made it to the takeout. We canoed across this entire lake. There's dad. Woohoo. We made it. Nap time with Lada. We started this campsite with disappointment last night and we left early in the morning, paddled down disappointment, took this portage across 140 rods we took yesterday back into the snowbank where the wind was kicking up pretty good. Um, but we made it across this point, took it right along this bank and the wind was really big, but we handled it because we're good canoeers like that. Made it all the way to the entry point, back exactly where we started. It was a good day. Yay! Some things that we learned on this trip is that it's important to take time to relax, to have fun, to have time away from your phone and just spend it with family and spend it surrounded by God's creation. You know, and another thing is our bodies are made to do hard things. We can have fun and push ourselves while enjoying these new experiences. So I'm grateful for this time in Minnesota, as I always am. And I know that I, and as well as everyone in our family, will take time to take these lessons back with us and enjoy our next trip. <laughs>